Hello guys, welcome back to Sand VFX. Today we are back with our Refire Basic series, part 4. Today in this series we will be looking at the physics tab in Refire. So I've already explained some features from here in my previous tutorials like the time scale and adding particle flow and bomb to the simulation properties and maybe many more like home grids, ground options and some more. Okay, so let's see what else we have left. So let's get started with this physical engine. We have got two physical engines. One is the bullet and physics. Bullet is the um, uh, default physical engine that comes with Rayfire for our dynamic simulations. And physics is from NVIDIA and we have to install it separately. Okay, then we have got the start frame and end frame that's uh, what number of frames you want to uh, simulate from our scene and this time frame is the amount of frames that we have into our simulation okay and if we just update our viewport timeline let's say about 250 then we'll have to make update right here as well otherwise it will just simulate 200 frames only so I need to make it 250 if I want to simulate uh, complete fr time time frames as per our timeline. Okay, then we have this collision tolerance. Um, this um, is uh, like overlapping of our objects. I'll show you uh, the example a little bit later when we are doing um, demolishing our geometry. I'll just show you what that means at the time. Okay, and then the sub step. Uh, let me just op unhide a scene. Oops, sorry, I don't want this one. I can hide. Okay, here I have a scene. Uh, let me just ungroup them. Okay, I have a ball. I have an extreme fast animation of about at seven frames, just seven frames. So that's extremely fast. And I have a box which is teal. So I just want to hit this box with this sphere. Okay. First of all, let me just set my sub step to one. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna turn on home grid as a ground option. So this option will create our grid as a floor, so our object won't fall below that. And since our sphere is animated, I want to check this deactivate animated dynamic objects option, so that our animated object won't be affected by our simulation until we check any of these three options. So we'll see that in a mm, letter more time okay I think they're already added to our dynamic objects okay then I have set my sub steps to one so let me just simulate it oops sorry I need to do it from zero okay and let me simulate it so you can see that my sphere didn't hit my box and just passed away the box okay so let me just bump this up to two and see what happens okay now it it's my box so that means the higher the f animation or faster the animation of our object the more we need our sub steps to be but remember higher the sub step more inaccurate result we will get so in most cases 3 will work pretty fine that's the default value if you start increasing it up then you might get some kind of popcorn effect or like um, objects juggling around such type of effect so if you got such type of effect in your simulation then you might want to decrease this sub state. Then we have this gravity. It's just uh, gravity of our scene, how much um, our object will be affected by the gravity. The default is 0 0.8. You can also increase this or decrease this. And then the time scale, it is just the speed of our simulation. I've explained about that in my previous tutorial. And also all these features are animatable. I've shown that in the uh, animating time scale in Rayfire tutorial. So you can watch that if you have not yet. And here we have four buttons right here. First one is for the preview mode. Start our simulation in preview mode. So no animation will be saved. And next one is the bake animation mode. Uh, it will just bake our animation if we let it run till end or if we just stop at the middle. Let me show you. Let me just do this and stop it right here. So we have the, our animation back till 17 frames okay so let me just zoom out and see 
okay just still 17 frames if you let it to continue the whole time all scene will be back you can also see keyframes which are created okay and then we have this pause and stop button the next we have is simulation properties where we can add particle flow any kind of uh, space warps or uh, forces any p bomb or also we have got this helper uh, ray fire bombs so i have also m added ray fire bomb in animated time scale features and also i have used the p flow here in using plifo with ray fire tutorial you can watch them all so i actually tried to create some examples and just explain some of these features in this physics tab so that it will be more interesting okay i think i don't need to explain it more if we create any kind of like let's say bomb you might want to add it to simulation properties so that the bomb will affect our simulation uh, let me not do that otherwise our tutorial is gonna be really long okay now here we have activation options so we already said about deactivate animated dynamic objects so that's our sphere uh, Okay, let us just again delete this and let me just create another object. Okay. Box. Okay. And then let me just animate it as well. About at 160 frames and let me just move it away. Okay. Well, first of all, let us just delete this keyframe and let us see about static deactivate static dynamic objects let me add this object to my dynamic objects and then let me run my simulation you can see my object falls down immediately so what I want is I don't want my object to start falling at the beginning I want it to start fall once uh, we have impact on it by any other force or geometry or even a mouse click so let me just click this option and let me run my simulation Okay, so now my object won't fall until it has any impact. So for the impact, we have got three options. First, we have force. We can add any kind of force like wind or uh, bomb or whatever we have. Okay, forces. Let me just put on gravity. Okay, and then add my gravity to my simulation properties. And check this option activated by force. Then let me back my simulation. Now it falls down. So that we can control the falling of this object with our gravity force so we can also animate this strength and so on okay we can also activate it by uh, another geometry so let me create another sphere um, sphere okay and let me put it up and let me animate it okay set key and maybe about 20 frames I wanna pull this down okay and let me add it to my dynamic object as well now I have already turned on my activate by geometry option so I need to also add it to my simulation properties so it will hit my object and my object will be uh, activated so let me run the simulation now you can see that as long after uh, my sphere hits my box it falls down okay and the last option is by the mouse click let me delete this sphere and let me just increase this one this is just uh, a radius of our mouse click so let me put it to 18 and if I run the simulation our objects won't fall until we click shift near the box so let me do that again run the simulation my mouse is around it but it's not working let me press the shift key then it falls down so you can try it yourself because I cannot show that I'm pressing the shift key right now okay yes. and the same thing with this below one deactivate animated dynamic objects it will just deactivate any animated dynamic objects like let me create a sphere okay and auto key set key and put in some animation okay okay I have deactivate if I don't check this option my sphere will fall down Oops, sorry it's not falling down because I have not added to my dynamic objects okay add and then if I bake simulation it will fall down 
so if I just click this option then my sphere won't fall but it will follow the path of this animation okay we can also activate it by force geometry or mouse click let me just show you with uh, this mouse click so that I don't need to create any force or anything else so let me back my simulation and right here I want to press shift key so it falls down as lo after I press the shift key and it is dynamic now okay so we are done with that so let's move down here we have other options we have home grid as ground that will create our grid as a ground so object will not fall below that force strength by mass uh, all our force that will affect different object uh, separately based on their mass if we check this option on force strength a multiplier if you have any force into our scene uh, let's say uh, wind so if it has strength 1 if I put this multiplier to 2 or let's say 5 then my strength of this wind will be 5 because it is it multiplies our force strength okay now here we have another option stick to mouse strength for that uh, let me create a box okay um, because it's really easy to create box so I always choose box so let me fragment my object as well uh, and then just fragment it okay here we have got several pieces let me turn on his faces okay and also set it to shaded mode and then stick to mouse strength let me bump this up to about 10 okay then uh, I want my end frame to be about 500 and also my viewport scale is about 500 so I can show you what I'm doing for a longer time and let me bake my simulation okay and let me click my object okay okay so I can just drag my objects with me okay like this click and drag them and I can release them by pressing the shift key so I think uh, this is true month strength so let me just put it a bit so that I can move it slowly okay you can also select a group of objects like this and move them around with this stick to mouse strength feature and just uh, we can release it by pressing the shift key or just clicking on a viewport again okay like this it's really interesting to do something it's really interesting uh, okay like that well, let me just stop the simulation collision damping so as we go on in here it's just up to one or zero so it refers to uh, when our objects are simulating in a scene if it collides with another object then the speed of that object will decrease if we have our collision damping to one and if we have it to zero the simulation of any objects won't slow down even though if it collides with other so it is not much realistic with collision damping at zero so it's better to put it to one or maybe you know, in between value like that and motion inheritance that will that is just for the animated object it is just a multiplier for our speed of our animation and max linear velocity is just the uh, maximum velocity that our uh, animated object can have and maximum angular velocity that is just the rotation of our object animated object maximum rotation which it can have they're not so much important maybe in some cases but um, I don't think that any of the scene will have such a high animated object so they won't affect that much okay then let us get to another great feature demolish geometry for that let me unhide my demolish unhide and also ungroup them sorry ungroup them okay I've got a simple two box one as a floor and one as a just in my ear so let me turn on first let me add them to my dynamic object oh, sorry this one I need to add it to static object okay then uh, let me just set it to 200 back and here also I don't need 500 frames let me simulate 
now you can see that the box just falls down okay now let me just turn this off okay and let me demolish turn on demolish geometry option and let me simulate so now that our object falls down and breaks into pieces so that's what demolish geometry option is and that's actually a really easy every I think every verifier user knows about that it's from like uh, important things to know while using Rayfire. <laughs> okay, the multi material solidity. It's uh, we also have that in our uh, material properties. So, oops, sorry. So that refers to how hard or how our object will behave like. Let's say if you have um, objects which will not break like heavy metal, they have higher solidity, and objects like glass, they have really low solidity. So rubber it won't break so it have solidity of 100%. Okay, that means if you have a scene where we have a concrete which have higher solidity and a brick which have lower solidity than concrete. Let's say we have uh, we want to heat a concrete object with a brick and break our concrete object. Uh, so that's physically impossible so in Rayfire we can do that by just increasing up our material solidity in demolition properties like that okay 0 0.2 let it be and depth level it will if we put it to 2 then each and every fragments that are created at first will have more fragments so that means uh, at first I had created 50 fragments so each 50 fragments will have more 50 fragments that means there will be a total of 50 into 50 that becomes about 2500 maybe I think I guess okay that must be so that's too much heavy so let me just put it to 10 to show you guys so there will be about 100 pieces so but there may not be 100 pieces sometime okay so objects are breaking into sm more smaller pieces okay, let me stop it and just show you guys okay from here we have got this lots of pieces falling down bigger pieces and it will just spread it to small pieces once it uh, crashes with our ground okay let me just delete them uh, and this depth ratio will have only once we have depth level 2 okay the probability it refers to uh, amount of fragments uh, additional fragments if we have it to 100% that means all the objects will fragment two times once and all small pieces will again get fragmented and if we have it less um, maybe about 50 then only 50% of first fragments will t go into next event where they will fragment once again okay so minimum size limit the size limit for our each fragments demolition by bomb and demolition by velocity that is just uh, if we have uh, our bomb or any other objects colliding with uh, our object so we might want to increase the strength or which we are demolish based on these options okay so next we have glue options um, so let us keep that for another part uh, I'm feeling a little lazy to record for a longer time so that gonna be really short maybe about f five to ten minutes I'll just uh, soon publish that in a few more days so I think I'll stop this uh, recording right here and wait for this part as well where we'll just see uh, this glue option and maybe I'll also think of some examples which you can do with these glue options so um, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like my page on Facebook. Thank you guys. Have a great time.